When you talk about men's figure skating, definitely the focal point is the quad. This is the quadruple toe loop. The skater uses his toe pick to vault himself into the air, then completes four revolutions before landing. This is the quadruple sow cow, an edge jump. Here, the skater takes off from an inside edge. One of the most difficult combinations done today is this, the quadruple toe, triple toe, double loop combination besides the sow cow and the toe loop. No other quad has been landed in competition. The men's free skate continues now here in Paris, and Roman Serov takes the ice. A surprise second place finish in the short program. He was fourth at last year's Russian National Championships, and he may attempt the quad loop here. If he does it, he would be the first to ever complete it in competition. Well, not only is he a good jumper, but he also has very good choreography and style within his skating. Terry, you mentioned that quadruple loop. It is the first jump planned in his program. Here it is. Back right outside edge and only a double. If the timing is just off a little bit, that's the result. A little bit anticlimactic, huh? <laughs> But look at that triple axle, triple toe loop. Nice pacing. And then a, another double. He's going in and out of his jumps. Triple flip, right foot, jabbing into the ice. Twenty-three years of age from Moscow. We saw him at Skate America, but to be frank, no one really paid much attention there. They certainly know him in Russia. I mentioned he finished just off the podium last year at the Nationals. And you're talking about finishing behind guys like Alexei Yagudin, Yevgeny Plushenko, Alexander Apt. That's the depth that we have in Russia right now in men's figure skating. And that just makes all of them work that much harder. They push each other. But because of that, it may be a while before we see this guy at the World Championships. Spread eagle. And watch this, right up into a triple axle. Failed attempt there. Hard to do that because your hips are turned out and both the feet are facing out like that. And then to jump off of that, really hard to do. But he'll step right up into a triple sow cow there. Very nice. jump was he jabbed the right foot in but he just threw his upper body and that took him off his center axis and he did not stay perpendicular to the ice maybe a bit of fatigue setting in at the end of four and a half minutes and still gaining experience Kind of slow skating into this, what was supposed to be a triple loop, only a double there. Remember, he was going to try a quad at the front of the program. 
Well, this is below the level that he's used to. Looked exhausted at the yeah. end of that program. Yeah. Remember, figure skating demands a lot of endurance. You have to have great stamina, and it doesn't get easier towards the end of the program. Great opportunity for him, though, to medal at this level. He was in second after the short program. Roman Serov. We were talking it up, the quad, but it was only a double. You, all, you have to get your upper body, lower body all working together and not fool with the timing to get those four revolutions. And here is the triple axle, three and a half rotations. That one very good and watch him step right up into the triple toe loop. A very good jump combination. And then what he does here is he kind of throws his upper body, shoulders come up too high, falls off the axis and then falls off the back of the skate. He doesn't have a successful landing. Victor Kujiasev used to coach Ilya Kulik, the Olympic champion, and still coaches Victoria Volchkova, who we will see later tonight here in Paris. Now, the first set of marks for technical merit, 4.9 up to 5.5. <laughs> How do you like this? From 4.9 up to 5.5 for technical merit. That's a huge range. And now for presentation, 5.4 up to 5.6. So Serov moves ahead of Ryan Yonke right now. We're coming back with the leader after this short program, the three-time world champion from Russia, Alexei Yagudin. He's already had a performance in the Grand Prix that he believes would have won a fourth world title. I think that to skate how I did in Canada, I think that will be enough to win the world this year because I have a lot of power in my skate and skate canada and I was actually amazed how I did there. Oh my gosh, that was huge. That is just remarkable. Ah, it's so athletic. I have never skated like I did in Canada. The best in the world will try to top that the rest of the season. I don't think you can. I think that when people see me skating good all the time, almost all the time. And they think that, oh my God, he works a lot and he's supposed to be on the ice all the time. But no, during the season, I skate like for one hour. That's it for a day. Like half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening. And I just prefer to lay on the sofa and watch TV. That I think the people will be surprised to hear about me. At the same point, I really like figure skating, but I also like their life. And we have also be like focused on our life and about our families and parents and other stuff. I think there are much more things to do in this life than just figure skating. From couch potato to three-time world champion, Alexei Yagudin skates when we come back to Paris. Coming up on ESPN tomorrow night and the pairs and ice dance Friday night on Lifetime. Welcome back to Paris. Trophy La Ligue continues now, and the men's free skate with the headliner on the ice. The three-time and reigning world champion from Russia, Alexei Yagudin, trying to win for the second time in the Grand Prix. He came in second at Skate America, lost to Timothy Gable, then was terrific at Skate Canada. That probably is the performance of the year so far. This music from the motion picture, Gladiator. Watch the intensity that he carries. He will open up with the quadruple toe loop. And then follow it up with a triple toe, almost identical to what he did in the short program. Yep. The only thing that was wrong with that is one, it was a little bit close to the boards, and two, the run out on the second triple was not very good. He needs to get more speed, but still. Now, triple Lutz.
Watch the height he'll get on this triple axle. Triple toe loop combination. There he is in the execution mode. Hard to believe that he is only 20 years old. Originally from St. Petersburg, Russia, but lives in the U.S., has his green card. And when you spend time with him, the thing that I'm most impressed with is that there's no false bravado. There, there's no insecurity that he is covering up. He tells you exactly what's on his mind. He's very honest about his skating. there. Triple flip, only a single loop. He was looking for a triple after that. But my, what an athletic man to get up in the air on that triple axle like that. Very strong. strong even if he is tired he has explosive strength to get him through the jumps at the end of the program look at that going down on one arm supporting his body hadn't seen that before no that is a new move Going rivalry, of course, with Yevgeny Plushenko, also from St. Petersburg. He tries to clinch next week in Japan. Yagudin will do it here in Paris. Look at the abandon he has. You know, he's just attacking at this point. Here you just don't see that. No. He gets stronger as the program goes on. Yes. And at the end, he is stronger than he was throughout the entire program. Absolutely. It's that switch. He turns it on. He gets in the zone. And nothing gets in his way. And I appreciate that so much and respect it because it is so hard to do. What an athlete. Talk to us this week about how difficult it will be to win his fourth straight world title and how challenging it is to skate event after event now and get up to a level he needs to be at. He said, yeah, I'm scared. I look around, I got Timothy Gable out there, I got Yevgeny Koshenko out there, Todd Eldridge is back now. I'm a little bit scared of trying to defend that title again, but you know what? When the lights go on, somehow he calls it up. How do you like this? Opening move, the quadruple toe loop. He gets plenty of height. The only thing he wants to improve on is he's kind of at a standstill doing the triple toe loop. He wants to have more run out. Barely able to do that, but he didn't put his foot down. Here's the triple axle. Just gets up in the air. Three and a half rotations, no problem. Another three on the triple toe loop. Fantastic. 
And this is the triple sow cow. Huge height on that. He breaks out of rotation about a half a foot off the ice. Very strong. Now check this out. This shows even more strength. He's going to go down, support his weight on one arm and slide along with no blades on the ice. Very tough to do. And what I love most about Yagudin is the intensity and the passion that he has when he's skating well. He knows it and so does the rest of the world. Obviously, very high marks on the way. And now the first set, five eights and five nines. I love it. Well deserved. What can you say about Alexei Yagudin more than he comes back every time? Now for presentation, Peter, he got two 6.0s in Canada. Check this out. Three 6.0s here in Paris. As I was going to say, he comes back every time. Better and better. The judges see that, and that's why they're rewarding him with those 6.0s. What a Grand Prix final it will be when he takes on Yevgeny Klyshenko. Wow. Well, the unenviable task of trying to follow that belongs to Stanique Jeannette. He will have the crowd on his side, though. He's the French national champion. He'll skate right after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Down to the final skater here in the men's free skate, Alexei Yagudin with a commanding lead. But here is the French national champion taking the ice. 23 years of age, Stanik Jeannette. And this crowd trying to cheer him on to stand on the podium. I'll tell you, tough act to follow, though. <laughs> Let's see if he can take some of the momentum that Yagudin's created and do well for himself here. To loop, he wanted a quad. But do you see the conviction that someone like Yaguden has when he's going in? And then compare him to someone like Stanek? It's it's a different mindset. Nowhere near the confidence. No, and not the intensity. And there, a big fall on the triple axle. Taking nothing away from this man. but still a totally different league from Yagut. And only a double flip there. Well, most are in a different league than Alexei Yagut. Stanik Shinette, though, we saw him at the World Championships in Nice. He placed seven. Heck of a finish for him. The surprise winner of the French National Championships last year with names like Laurent Tobel and Vincent Restancourt. You know, here's the other thing. When someone like Yagudin gets on the ice, you know what he is trying to deliver. A great program that shows athleticism, intensity, passion. With a program like this, you're not really sure of what he's trying to portray for an image on the ice. It's uh, sort of nondescript. Mm -hmm. There you go. Nice triple axle.
get together now. Yes. Much stronger at the end of the program. When this happens, you know that it's nerves at the beginning because what he's doing is getting more warmed up, more comfortable. He's obviously trained, so much improved over the front of the program. He did gather a lot of momentum toward the end of the program, and if you're going to have a fair performance, you want it to be at the front so the judges only remember you for what you did at the end, because that's the last thing they see. Fourth quarter comeback, at least to you make it, it solid. Here at home, Stanique Jeanette, the running French champion. Can he stand on the podium? We'll see. And don't forget, the ladies come up next. Maria Butierskaya backstage. She's getting ready. The ladies' free skate follows the men as we continue from Trophy Lali. Danique Jeanette, the French national champion, sits and waits for his marks. Peter, let's take a look at his triple axel here. Now, the first one he had a lot of trouble with. He gets up in the air, but doesn't get around and has a big crash on the landing. However, Amazing to see that he really got it together on the second one. This one, good tight rotation, but those legs or the leg and arms coming out to stop the rotation much better. And this is an unusual slide, but you can see that nothing like what Yagudin did where he held that long position on the ice. And uh, pretty pumped up to know that the end of the program was a heck of a lot better than the start. Now, earlier today at practice, Anik Gaye, the coach on the right, pulled a Bobby Knight. I mean, she was all over Stanique Jeanette after he made some mistakes in practice. Maybe it helped him come back tonight. Technical merit marks 5.2 up to 5.6. And these marks for him, they would have been so much better had he had less mistakes in the beginning of the program. Remember, though, he's in fourth, so he's trying to make it to the podium here. Presentation marks, and those are good enough, Peter. 5.4 to 5.7. Stanik Jeanette not only makes it to the top three, he moves Roman Seroff out of the second spot. He's in second, right behind Alexei Yagudin. Silver medal time. So it's Alexei Yagudin who wins the gold here in Paris, his second gold of the Grand Prix series, and he has secured a spot at the Grand Prix final. Stanique Jeanette, the French champion, ends up with the silver medal, and Roman Seroff of Russia, great event for him. He ends up with the bronze. Ryan Yankee, all the way from ninth to sixth. That's where he finishes up here in Paris. Right now, Peter Carruthers has made his way over to have a word with the champion. Peter? Okay, Terry, thank you very much. Alexi Yagudin, three big 6.0s. What does that do for your confidence? I think that that was a result of my work on ice, that I did a really good job tonight on the ice, and I think that that what judges decided to, to give me after my successful skating. Now, you really know how to get into the zone. You're able to focus and concentrate all week in practice, trouble with the quad, but in the short program, you nailed it. In the free program, you nailed it. What do you do to get yourself psyched up? I think that that's why I'm a three-time world champion, that I, have, I can be really focused in the right time. Focused, to say the least. Now, you do this really neat slide in your program where the elbow goes down on the ice and the feet go out. How did you come up with that? You know, actually, I have this um, element in my interpretive program, and I included it into my free program tonight because I was not allowed to do anything else because I did a lot of jumps before it. So, But I think I got deduction on that because it was illegal. Now, looking toward the Grand Prix Finals and the World Championships, what can you do to improve upon this to go into those events? I think just to skate with more passion and just to include more, one more quad. Well, I gotta tell you, that was an extraordinary performance, outstanding by Alexi Yagudin. Terry, back to you.
All right, Peter, thank you. It's a little bit scary to think that Alexei Yagudin could add a quad and get even better based on what he has done this season. But look at those who have qualified already for the Grand Prix Final. Yagudin does it here. Timothy Gable has done it, and Todd Eldridge. What a Grand Prix Final it will be as Yagudin takes on those who have already qualified. Timothy Gable, remember, beat him at Skate America and performed three quads in his free skate. And Todd Eldridge, of course, the world champion, five-time U.S. champion, is back on the eligible scene. And next week in Japan, Yevgeny Plashenko should qualify too. It will be a great final in Tokyo. Much more to come tonight from Paris, though. The ladies taking the ice to warm up, including Maria Butirskaya trying to hold off Victoria Volchkova from Russia and the young American making her senior Grand Prix debut, Jenny Kirk. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Speed Pass. Today's way to pay. It's free from mobile. Earlier in the ice dance competition here in Paris, the reigning world champions, Marina Anasina and Gwendal Pezera, took the ice for the free dance in second place, needing to come back. Here's how Susie Wynn and I called it. The music from the soundtrack Beethoven's Last Night. lift because she exit coming coming out forward which is harder to do because the toe pick can get in the way was choreographed by Christopher Dean and Ludmila Vlasova. They also had a little help from Tatiana Tarasova. Torval and Dean set such a standard in ice dance. Do you see the influence with them? Last year I did when Torval and Dean choreographed their Carmina Burana free dance. I could really see the influence and it really developed something special in them this year. I just don't think they've, they've captured the depth that they were reaching to last year. is involved, a little bit of practice to make those move out well. Lack of unison in the set of twizzles and turns that you just saw.
a standing ovation for the home team here in Paris. Marina Anacina, Gwendal Pejara bringing the fans to their feet and coming back from second place to win the gold medal at Trophy La Ligue over the Russian team, Irina Lobacheva and Ilya Averbuk. Anacina and Pejara have grown quite accustomed to skating away with the goal. They are the reigning world champions and join Lobacheva and Averbuk and Fuserpoli and Margallo as those who have qualified already for the Grand Prix Final. Barbara Fuserpoli, Maurizio Margallo, what a showdown that will be at the Grand Prix Final in Tokyo.